and indeed to concur with many of the points raised by uh, members from across the House. In the time available to me, I would like to raise three points. Uh, first of all, the pressure on Greenland in and around Reading and the neighbouring town of Woodley. Um, the importance of protecting green spaces within um, towns and historic streets. The need for the government to rethink its planning proposals and indeed to have a new planning policy. Um, first, if I may turn to the pressure on Greenland in our area, our part of the Thames Valley. This is significant already, um, as many colleagues may know. Um, we have a growing population in our part of southern England and a lot of pressure from speculative developers trying to build on the outskirts of existing towns. Reading doesn't have a green belt, but it does have a lot of green land. The Chilterns area of outstanding natural beauty is a very short distance away from the northern boundary of the town. In other directions, there's other, there are other protected sites and other um, interesting landscapes which need to be preserved for local amenity use. And as other members have mentioned, it is so important for local residents to be able to go out and enjoy the countryside, whether that's walking their dog, looking at the countryside, enjoying the green space. It's very important for people's well-being and mental health. And as uh, one of the colleagues here said earlier, everyone should have access to our wonderful countryside. Sadly, in our area, we have a specific problem with speculative developers, and I would like to just mention one case which I think indicates just how appalling this can be. Um, on one site, on the edge of Emma Green, which is a small um, village which is now part of Reading, a speculative developer wanted to build a large number of executive homes which would have started to join up Reading with the neighbouring South Oxfordshire village of Sonnen Common. Um, which is obviously completely against the wider thrust of planning policy and the importance of maintaining separate settlements. This is an unsuitable site, unsustainable, would have led to a large amount of extra traffic in both directions, which no residents in the area wanted. I and neighbouring MPs and parish councils campaigned against this, and we were successful. However, I really am concerned that the government's proposals could unleash a wave of similar applications in our area on the outskirts of existing towns and cities in my own constituency and in neighbouring parts of southern England. The strange contrast with that, though, in our case, is that in Reading there is a very large amount of brownfield land, rather like mentioned by colleagues across the House this morning. We actually have enough brownfield within the borough of Reading, let alone the neighbouring suburbs, um, to provide all, almost all the housing that's needed until 2036, and I'm quoting from the Reading Borough local plan. So I would urge the Minister to listen to that point, and I do hope he can consider rethinking the policy. Um, on the second point, preserving historic streets, this is a related issue for many um, people living within towns and cities, and indeed I think my, my colleagues from two historic cities um, on, on this side mentioned this, and others have hinted at it. Reading is a Victorian, Georgian, and arts and crafts town with a huge amount of really attractive architecture. Sadly, we already face, as a university town, and with many new residents coming in, a lot of pressure with um, houses being converted into bedsits, causing all sorts of issues for neighbouring residents within the same streets, um, overflowing bins, parking problems, a whole range of things. Now, sadly, the government's proposals would allow what I believe, in many cases, could be quite ugly um, extensions under permitted development, like um, unwanted large rear extensions, loft conversions, which are out of keeping, um, and which I think this aspect of it needs to be rethought, and they should be an emphasis on maintaining the attractive visual appearance of historic areas, um, whether they are conservation areas or not, for um, the benefit of all the residents in those areas. And I do hope the Minister will also consider this point. It is related to the issue of preserving the green environment. It's also our wonderful urban environment in many towns and cities. Um, moving on, I do appreciate the pressure on time. Um, just to, to highlight what might be um, a potential future policy, as many other colleagues have mentioned today, quite rightly, there should be, in my opinion, a much greater emphasis on redeveloping Brownfield. We do actually have some really interesting and positive examples of that within our town, um, where attractive red brick terraced houses or low-rise flats have replaced urban, uh, sorry, have replaced um, industrial sites near to the town centre, often reusing land which was derelict for some time, providing a benefit to local residents in removing an ugly site, also protecting the environment by reducing traffic, increasing cycling and walking, and public transport use, all of which is for the greater good and at a time when we're uh, trying to address really serious challenges of climate change and other related environmental challenges should be sh surely the way forward. Um, and I would hope that the Minister will focus on this point and look again at the balance in the planning system between Brownfield and Greenfield. <coughs> at the moment it seems to be completely out of kilter and sadly the government proposals from what I understand of them, would take this much further and would allow developers far more leeway 
to build in areas where local residents quite clearly do not want development and where there will be unfortunate environmental impacts as you increase car pollution, traffic jams and indeed an economic impact from the traffic and transport delays. So to conclude, and I do appreciate the pressure on time, I do hope the Minister will think again and will listen to the concerns raised from members across the House this morning. Thank you. Maria Caulfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gary. It's a pleasure to